Hey everybody, um, I'm back. Uh, as you can see, I have the heat sink in front of me. Um, I'm ready for the fun part or tedious part, any way you look at it. For me, it's a little bit tedious because I like to be a perfectionist and get everything uh, um, equal, centered, and equally spaced. So uh, I already started the other heat sink, so I do have an idea and feel of what I want to do. Um, I highly recommend that you come out with a design. Uh, this is the design right here, what I'm going to do. Um, there's quite a few ways to set up the LEDs on this heat sink. On the video, Maker's LED video, they're set up like this, where the two tabs are facing up and two tabs are facing bottom. And the advantage of this is that you can really tightly pack these LEDs. So I'm going to show you just with three of them what this can do. And then even more fit around here just to make a hexagon. So basically these are, it's very good at uh, packing these close together. Now if you're only dealing with one or two channels this is, could be an advantage to you because you want to be uh, getting so much disco ball effect. Um, I'm not too worried about disco ball effect of because of all the royal blue I have, I'm hoping it will uh, even it out and I, and I have dimming capability so I'm not too worried about it. Um, I can dim it all the way down if I have to. But um, this is an advantage if you're not using uh, a dimmer and you're only and you're using colors on just a couple channels. So let's say you put red and green on your whites, uh, then you can uh, put them pretty close together and so you have less of a disco ball effect. Um, but for the way I'm doing it, since I have multiple channels, 15 channels to be exact, I want them spaced out more so I can deal with the wires. So I'm going to have them straight up and down like this. The positive is going to be facing upward. And the way I start off is I start off at the middle. So I'm going to put these back. I have all my uh, LEDs laid out in different cups over here. As you can see, here's just a couple. So first thing I, what I did is I um, counted how many bolts uh, I needed for the LEDs and for each row. And so, so for the two middle rows, I needed 23. Um, the next outer two, 21. And then the outer, the last outer rows, um, only nine. And I'm just using two bolts per LED and I'm doing it in a diagonal fashion. Um, one thing I want to mention about this uh, heat sink is that the newer ones they make, I have a multimeter here, a fluke multimeter. Uh, the newer ones they make are anodized. And what the advantage of the heat sink being anodized is that when I touch it, there's no continuity. Now if I go to the end where they cut it, can you hear that? That means that there's continuity. So here when it's anodized, and then here on the end, which is this bare metal. So that helps because that means that none of your LEDs are going to be grounded out if you mess up in wiring. So that is an advantage to the uh, anodization finish on this heat sink. So that's a big plus. Um, didn't really know that anno uh, prevented a signal, which there, there probably is some current, but you really don't have to worry about it. Even though you do want to make sure your uh, your joints um, are covered and uh, aren't touching the heat sink because later on it could cause you problems. Um, anyway, how I start this off, oh, and this is kind of a, I guess not so much of a con, but I almost didn't measure my heat sink when I first started and it's listed as 18 but it's actually just a little bit more than 17 and a half inches. It's about, um, let's see here. I'd say 17 and 5 eighths is how long the heat sink is. So I'm just gonna go a hair above, uh, a hair above 18.75 inches or 18 and 3 fourths inches. So I'm going to start off, my center LED is my amber LED. So there's my amber. 
I'm going to first uh, measure out to give me an idea. And I'm just going to go a little bit farther than 17.5. Okay, so I kind of have an idea and I'm going to just leave that on there. And I'm going to take my uh, thermal compound by Arctic Silver. And you seriously use the smallest dab you can possibly put on the LED. But I'm just going to flip this over, make sure there's nothing on there. And uh, actually, since I already used this, I'm going to squirt out the first little bit, wipe it off. And I just put it directly on there, squeeze a little bit until I see some come out and then press because this is pretty stringy so I press and wipe and it does a pretty good job and again I'm doing positive up negative down so I look at my heat sink 17.5 and just a little bit And I think that's about good right there. So I'm going to push down for this first one. And I'm going to line it up. Now what I should have done is uh, move these uh, screws over, but I'll just uh, shift them over. And I'm going to get my screwdriver. This does take a long time, so I'll be splitting up this process in many videos, and I won't be showing you the entire process um, because it will take a very long time. So that basically goes in there, and take one of these bad boys to the other side, and that slides in there, and I'm actually going to do it the other way. Forgot. Just to make sure I'm not moving the LED too much, you just want to watch for that so you don't knock it out of center. Alright, so I'm going to tighten this top one just a little bit. Move this second one in. And these washers aren't pushed all the way up. I'm having trouble with that. Let's see if I can get it now. All right. If you guys are wondering what amber is, it's basically a yellow. Uh, I'd say more of a yellowish orange than straight up yellow. But uh, you usually don't see them in LED light fixtures on the market. There is one in uh, the Radeon Pro. And since I had available uh, available channels, I decided to add it to the fixture. There's only uh, one on each heat sink. So um, after that, basically what I started doing is I started going by these rows. So the next one I'm gonna do is uh, blue. I'm gonna do it right up here. So I got my blues. I'm gonna move these over. Since I kinda already screwed myself on these two rows. Like I said, um, there is a little bit of adhesive um, sticking out of the side. That just shows, you know, the, the least, you know, the, just the smallest amount because you're going to be squeezing this to the heat sink as tight as possible to get a good uh, thermal connection. 
Um, but then what I'm going to do is move a screw over. And basically all I'm going to do is just put another little dab on here. Just like that. Have my positive up. And then screw this a little bit more. I'm basically put my my bolt right next to the other one where the amber's at. Line up my LED. Okay, and then bring my other bolt here. I didn't tighten that down all the way. I know it's pretty hard for you guys to see. I'm not at the best angle. But I'm going to tighten this one down. You really want to look. And, you know, I'm a perfectionist, like I said, and I just want to make sure everything's parallel. And, uh, even. And, uh, there we go. So the next LED is going to be like I said, we're going to go on a diagonal. So, uh, the next one is another blue. And I'm just going to put some adhesive on it. You want to try to avoid touching the heat sink until you have the LED where you want it because it will smear the adhesive and this adhesive is, I guess it's not adhesive, it's uh, thermal grease, but it is hard to wipe off. I tried doing it on the other heat sink and it is pretty difficult to uh, get off, especially when you have other LEDs already on your maker's heat sink. So I'm just going to screw it in. Make sure it stays straight up and down and uh, tightly snug to that other bolt and screw in the bottom one and this one in pretty, pretty easy. So uh, I'm going to finish this row.